Hey, hey, family. It's Al Kumar coming to you live. Got my glow this morning. <laughs> this is seeded watermelon, cucumber, and mint from Plant Mama Alchemy, who does all fresh squeezed juices for fruit fast. I mean, juice fast and raw food diets and things like that but that's not what i come to talk to you guys about this morning mm -hmm. i want to um have a conversation about yesterday reflecting on yesterday the fourth of july and um all that entails I want us to converse. So definitely, you guys know, normally, um, I like for these kind of discussions to be uh, back and forth, but even exchange. So definitely share your opinions, share your thoughts, share your feelings, share if you disagree. So if you have if some things that I'm saying that you don't agree with, share that. You know, speak on that and let's, let's talk about it. But I thought... This would be a good time to reflect on yesterday, the 4th of July, what that means to us, you know, how do we feel about that, you know, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, um, and is there really time to reflect? I thought about that, you know, I was thinking about that this morning. I'm like, okay, is there really time for us to like be reflecting on our decisions and things like that um, especially in this in this current environment and atmosphere but um, let's talk about it 4th of July um, I grew up uh, learning the tenements of Islam my father was a Muslim before I was born he um, converted uh, into Islam and joined the Nation of Islam, uh, I think back in like the early 60s. And I was born in 73, right? And so my whole life long um, um, holiday celebrations was not a thing that we did. We didn't do Christmas. We didn't do Fourth of July. We just, you know, we didn't because that's, that's all I knew growing up, right? But I know that it's a, um, the way I grew up is a whole lot different than the way most people out there grew up in this country. Um, and so we take on traditions, um, Wolf of July's and Christmas and things like that. That becomes traditional for a lot of black families in America. So um, I, I, I understand... Um, how ch how difficult it is to change something that you've been doing your whole life long. You know, what's been a tradition for you forever, since you was even born. And your mamas and your grandmamas and your great-grandmamas did the same thing. Um, so I'm not here to attempt to try to force somebody to change who they are or who or what they've been accustomed to doing, I should say. Um, I'm here to talk about these traditions. I think we should, we should have these kind of discussions and conversations. These that for some people, they may find uncomfortable or a challenge or don't like to talk about. I prefer to have these kind of discussions and go towards these type of things because normally the things that make us the most uncomfortable are the things that uh, that should be discussed. Those are the things that hold us back from uh, being able to be our full and complete selves. You know, those emotions are there for a reason. So if something making you that uncomfortable that you don't even want to hear it, or you don't even want to discuss it, then that's something, that's some, that's some energies that's being clogged and blogged. So anyway, let's talk about 4th of July. 
What do you think about it? Do you think that celebrating um, a day of independence for a people that have kept us in subjugated slavery for more than four centuries is a wise thing for us to be doing. Let me hear you guys, what you guys got to say. Hey, Fan Fanta. Um, and let's sit, talk about what that really means when we say, when I say celebrate. Mustafa Ayo, hey, Baba Ayo on the line. Chaka, Cynthia, Marion. Um, Independence Day. And I would, let me recommend that Frederick Douglass wrote a really strong piece um, about 4th of July. He said, it, it's titled, What is it? What is 4th of July to a slave? And uh, I, I suggest that we all go back and read that timeless piece because he dropped some, a whole lot of nuggets in it. You know, and, and I'll post it before this is all said and done so you guys can um, get it conveniently. Frederick Douglass's piece. But talk to me. What do you guys think? What's your thoughts? Hey, Shaka, what's your thoughts? Bonjour, Sarah, um, about the celebration of 4th of July. Um, light and fireworks dressing in our red, white, and blue flags, um, things of that nature. When we were enslaved, um, most slaves in this country had to work from sunup to sundown six days a week um, on plantations, you know, and um, rarely were you able to just have a day off Sunday was that day but outside of that was the holiday seasons so 4th of July Christmas seasons normally unless you had just one of them crude crude extra crude slave masters who just you know normally that was like the unwritten rule custom in slavery time that you would allow your slaves time off for those holidays and our ancestors would get together and they were able to maybe have get a pass to go onto another plantation to visit some other family members that they haven't seen since the last 4th of July and um, they were even they were able to just take a load off you know so a lot of them had the moonshine and they would get the little banjos out and you know they would let women would dance and you know they would do what they could do together to collectively come together and have a good time. So fast forward to 2020. Um, what I see is not much has changed. I don't think there's anything wrong with us getting together. I'm not advocating against that at all. We should any chance we have to come together as a family unit, we should take and, and love each other and appreciate each other and have a good time together and things of that nature. Um, with that being said, what are we doing when we come together? Are we conversing about our future? Are we planning some things that we need to be doing to better ourselves, to get ourselves off of the plantation? Or are we plant, plotting an insurrection? <laughs> When we're together, you know what I'm saying? Are we trying to figure out some laws and things that we can help maneuver through to help get us freer? Or are we lighting, going and lighting fireworks and, and celebrating another people's freedom while we are still enslaved? Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. Hey, Annette. Um, Obafemi says, personally, it's a waste of money, time, energy, and resources. We should be educating and training on this day. The fireworks are symbolic of warfare to me. Good point that you brought up. Now, I learned but was told 
by somebody else, a reputable, reputable scholar, that I was wrong. But I learned that the gunpowder gun originated in China, and they used it as fireworks. They used it as a source of, you know, light entertainment and things like that. And the European saw this technology and thought that it could be a good way to uh, subjugate a good way, you know, a, a, a killing weapon. So they took the fire, the gun, the, the powder from the fireworks and they ma manipulated it in a way to make bullets and to make cannons and to make, you know what I'm saying, weapons of war, killing machines. So, yeah, that's a good, you said the fireworks are symbolic of warfare. So right now it's a symbolism of warfare, but, you know, some societies just use it just for mere entertainment before the gun was originated and I think we all know who created the gun <laughs> so um yeah good point um Shaka I'm more moved by the moment that is finally calling into question our our I think you've meant reality as it relates to all of these holidays that celebrate white supremacy yeah are we are is that what we're doing with our time family are we celebrating um, white supremacy? You know what I'm saying? Are we, is, is what we're doing allowing another people to remain um, 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 over us? You know? That's what I, 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 I wanted to talk about. Now, Juneteenth came and went. That was last month, and a lot of us didn't even know what um, Juneteenth meant. I had to learn Juneteenth myself. I didn't learn that in school, you know, it wasn't until I got out of school and around different um, sects of people, and you know what I'm saying? And the, the people who I found myself congregating around and being around taught me a lot of things, and Juneteenth was one. That's why it's important to watch who, you, who you're around. Because people that you, you you spend your time with, they can either help uplift you and build you mentally, spiritually, or they can bring you down. So, but anyway, Juneteenth was is a is a, is a day in history that most Black people uh, didn't know much about. Um, so now we're learning. We're learning more about who we are and our history. That's why history is so important can't get away from that and um and so we when we know better we should do better and so a lot of us are acting upon the newfound information that we have and you know preferring to celebrate um our own ancestors uh freedom independence from chattel enslavement and um what does that look like? What does that look like when we really begin to start creating our own holidays and celebrations and, and spending money with, with each other to help promulgate and, and foster those holidays and celebrations? So as opposed to going and getting, spending our money with the people who are oppressing us and buying from them and wearing their flags on our backs and helping them to celebrate their own freedoms and independence uh, from, you know, and we're, we're not doing that anymore. We're actually doing something totally different and taking all our resources and our time and energy and celebratory spirits and, and um, putting them into each other. What does that look like? What what is that what 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 is that given to our children when they see us do things like that? Let's talk about it. We should let all things of this nature go. It's a house mentality. Yeah, and then I started off saying, I understand. I understand. I may not appreciate, I may not agree, I may not even like, but I understand how routine go how we people can get into regular routines to a point where you don't even think about it you know you get in a car and you you drive to to the same job you know every day 
And, and you know, after a while, you ain't got to think about what turn, what turn to make, you know what I'm saying? And the speed limit and all that kind of stuff because you're just so tunnel vision and it becomes like a part of you that you don't even got to think no more about what you're doing because you've done it so many times before. And I see us celebrating these holidays is the same way, you know, but that's why I like to have these conversations because let's stop. Let's pause and let's really think about what we doing here. You know what I'm saying? Who is it benefiting? Are we really um, causing ourselves more, more harm in what we're doing? Are we? Um, a lot of our people say that they're not celebrating Independence Day, but family gathering and fellowship. That's, yeah. Yeah, and that's what I mean. And that's what they... They believe and that's what they're doing, but I don't think we understand clearly the backstory of what we do. And I think we should do those things. We should fellowship and gather with family. But what are we doing in that process? You know, should we be switching some things up to make more sense, to make more logical sense, to, to better improve our lives? You know, when we do gather with family, you know? Why can't we make it a, a day where we buy black, you know, or we, you know what I'm saying? Or make it a day where we encourage others to come up with better ideas that we can celebrate, you know? So instead of the fireworks, hey, right, let's, let's figure out something else we can do on the 4th as we gather and fellowship that won't entail depleting our own resources and giving them to those who who despise us and who rule over us that's all i'm saying let's let's think about it a little little um deeper than what we've been doing because that's where and how we grow that's how we get to a to a better space um yeah because right now what we do is we are we're honoring other people's freedoms and other people's ancestors. That's what we're doing, you know, when we when we um wave the red, white, and blue flag and and um and um you know and celebrating Independence Day when um our ancestors were still enslaved the day that this country received well the people <laughs> the words the day that america received their independence from um britain it, it you know was what 1776 well our ancestors were still enslaved in chains at that time so what do we really celebrate are we celebrating that are we celebrating that you know think about that so it, when you know we now know that the, the last day that um, down in Texas that our own ancestors gained their independence was on Juneteenth, June 19th. Um, I'm not sure of the date somebody can, you know, come in and help me out there. So why are we celebrating that? You know, why aren't we building that up and making that a powerful moment for ourselves and our own offspring? So that's all I'm, I'm saying. Um, we should we should really stop and and be willing to take a cold hard look at ourselves in the mirror really raw and rare and what that looks like you know and don't be shy and ashamed to do it i know a lot of us we have a tendency to them they do that they shouldn't be doing that that's why they you know what i'm saying but we rarely do we ever stop to like well, well how am i contributing you know what I'm saying? How am I contributing? Forget what everybody else around me is doing. Well, what am I doing in my own world, in my own space and time to contribute to what's going on? And I think when we really start making a habit of doing that, um, we can really start being honest with ourselves and be moving towards change because the more you point the finger at other people and, and blame and, and, and fault, them for what they not doing, you not you not focusing on what you ain't doing. So what you doing and what you not with well, the things that's going on in your world, it, it, it takes back 
stage to your focus on what other people ain't doing. That's like when people say, wait, what, 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 uh, what you doing? What you, you ain't doing nothing. I ain't out here doing, and I'm like, people, we, I ain't doing nothing to help build black people, da, 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 I never, um, I don't like that type of talk because I think it's oxymoronic. It's like, you can't be out here productive and, and, and doing things to help move us forward and saying y'all you know we ain't doing nothing we ain't doing because you you know if you if you are part of that we then that tells me that you're not doing nothing because somebody that's really doing something and moving in a productive way you know what i'm saying they they're doing something so to say we ain't doing nothing that would include yourself so again just going back to that mirror what does the mirror say you know not what everybody else ain't doing um i think it's time for us to start making sacrifices you know and it's just sacrifices so we can have a better future for our children and you know and so if that means that we have to switch up some things that we've been doing our whole lives long you know then we should really be looking at that. June 19th, 1865. Thank you, Sheree. Appreciate that. That was um, the day that the last um, of our ancestors were made aware that the the war was over and they the free the, their freedom, so called, you know, freedom was won and they no longer had to be considered slaves. Of course, that came with a whole nother, whole nother pile of <laughs> other stuff that came after that. But still, that should be a day of remembrance for us. That should be a day that we focus on and, and we gather uh, our own ancestors in remembrance. Because right now, and we conjuring up yesterday, there was a conjure up of other people's uh, ancestors and remembrance. Um... Making sacrifices. I was, um, I can't, I, I posted something on my page I got from somebody else's page this morning about it was a whole bunch of celebrities, I guess, and saw so some recognized a few faces in the crowd Jay Z, T.I., some other folks, a bunch of them, and they're all together and they're taking a the picture, some of them holding up liquor bottles, and you know what I'm saying? They smiling, look like they was having a good time together, and the caption said, it's a, over a, a billion dollars in this room or something, I'm paraphrasing. Over a billion dollars in this room, but, but not, we don't have not one uh, bank, you know, um, um, school system or, you know, banking institutions or fi insurance and financials. So they were saying, like, you know, all these resources we have amongst us, no hospitals, but yet and still... We rely on other people for our everyday basic needs. And I really, really, that really made me think long and hard. I'm like, wow, that's, that's sad. That's sad that we have so much. We got, what, uh, uh, blacks in America are the ninth richest country in the world. We were, if we were a country, our own independent state, we would, we would be the ninth wealthiest country it might be different now it might be even shorter than that now but the ninth wealthiest country in the world think about that for a second think about if we were independent and what that would look like but yet we have all these resources at our fingertips and we don't have a single hospital that we can claim that the black people built and, and run or we don't have a, 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 you know, things like that. Those, those necessities that make a society run. You know, we, we, you know, grocery stores and hospitals and schools and um, uh, manufacturing plants and uh, things like that. You know, and all these things that we need for our basics, our food, clothing, and shelter, that we have to go to another group of people to receive 
who most often could care if we live or die really prefer us in this in in a lower predicament and condition than themselves because that's what keeps them rich and wealthy and we're in this quagmire and instead of trying to get out we have everything we need we got the key to the lock to unlock the gate to get ourselves out but we decide to throw a party inside of the cage you know we should really 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 take a look at ourselves not other people ourselves and what we do on a daily day basis to contribute to that um because poverty you can have a you can have a whole boatload of money and still have a poverty mind state you know it starts poverty starts here that's why most people who win the lottery you know most i think it's like 95 percent of the people who win the lottery all spend it all and lose it all within a certain amount of time why because they you know they 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 don't know what it what it takes usually the usually the ones who spend their hard-earned money usually i mean i play the lottery once a year or something like that so you know but i'm talking about those who consistently on a regular basis really you know make it a habit to go and take some of their money and drop it on lottery tickets and scratch offs and stuff like that normally those type of people don't have proper education as it relates to finances and economics because they if they knew they they would know that you know the money that they waste on those tickets and stuff could have came back to them tenfold if they just invested it in the stock market or things like that so a lot of us are ignorant to what what it really means to be wealthy even when you have a whole lot of money you know so we do things like you know the our impulses you know we have poverty we have a poverty mind state even though we have resources you know and we can tell by the our impulses somebody who what am i trying to say here somebody who has impulse you know impulse consumerism they don't think about long term they don't think about like putting money into an uh insurance you know or life insurance things like that or um long term investments you know five year business plans like you know if you want to start your own business you know most businesses take a while to get off the ground and so that means that you have to be patient and you have to have you know the 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 the, the resources to be able to get your business off the ground and still take care of home well, if you have a poverty mindset, you're not thinking like that at all. You know, you give me mine now, give me mine now. You know what I'm saying? And um, and so there is a difference in how we think is the way why we find ourselves like stuck in this predicament of having so much tangible tangibles, but yet are still in a predicament where we are under somebody else's footing as a whole. I'm not talking about individuals. We can point to the Oprahs and the Jay-Zs and the Puff Daddies, and we can point to the individual successes, but no one person can rise above the conditions of their people. So if that's being said, then we can point all day long, but what is the whole of all? What are you, you getting it for yourself? You know what I'm saying? You good, you high on a horse, you living like a fat rat, but the vast majority of people hungry and starving? What does that say about you? You know what I'm saying? So I'm talking about overall, you know? So it's a mind state that we have to maneuver ourselves out of and away from in order for us to become stronger, you know, more powerful, um, and, and and pursue happiness, the pursuit of happiness, you know?
And not just for us, but for who coming behind us. You know, I don't know about y'all, but I'm tired of turning on the TV or the internet and, and every time and every other day there's another daggone killing or you know, Chicago's, you know, we didn't got, you know, 50 people shot in Chicago over one weekend and police killing us left and right and getting off with impunity. And, you know, so I'm tired of hearing about, aren't you? Don't you want a better world for you and yours? I know I do. So what are we doing? I mean, we know the problems. We know all day long. Look what they did this time. See, look. Oh, my God turn on the TV or check this video out. Here's another one. Here's another Karen. And you know what I'm saying? Another police didn't kill one of our brothers. And that we know, we know. That's why I don't make a habit of keep repeating that stuff. That's the kind of thing on my post because I see them. And if I see them, I know y'all see them. So it's like, okay, we get it. We get that we are being targeted out this joker big time. So but what are we doing about it? What are we doing to change that? Because if we're thinking and we're waiting on the, the same people that's causing us all this grief and turmoil to fix the problem for us, then, you know, I think we're just real, being real naive. You know, we're going to be waiting in vain. So I'm here to say, what are we doing? What are we doing as a collective, as a community, as a individuals in the community to change that, them dynamics? To do it, to, to work it out to something different is going on. Hey, David, Joyce, freshly dressed while remaining oppressed. <laughs> Sound like a rap song. Yeah, that's that's us. Um, sacrifice, give them they stuff back. Obifemi say, give them they stuff back. Yeah, it's like we got to make sacrifices. I mean, life, life especially right now, it's just not all about entertainment. I like to have a good time just as much as anybody else. But I know that that ain't what life is all about. You know, sometimes it's some serious it's a time for peace and it's a time for war. And right now we're playing around. We're playing games and warfare. And our children will be suffering the consequences of our inactions. You know what I'm saying? Our children will be suffering because of the things that we refuse to do today. So, yeah, it's a time for peace. And it's a time for war, family. So, um, yeah, things that we do that we should be doing. And I get it. It's like we're not because of the mind state we find ourselves in. You know, the, the poverty mind state. You know, so instead of saving... You know what I'm saying? To, to buy a home for you and your family. You know what I'm saying? You take your money and you you, you, you party on the weekends. You know what I'm saying? And you, 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 you spend it all at the malls. Or you, you, you go on to the concerts. You go party on the boats and the cruises and stuff like that. And so when it's time to have some tangibles. So where, you know what I'm saying? Where you could, you could have took some of that partying and having a good time and invested some of that money for for the long term and because after a while then you'll be able to have your pool to be big enough to you can invest in your own home and that home will bring you even greater money and wealth in the form of equity but when you have a poverty mind state you're not thinking like that you're thinking impulsively oh i got this extra money in my pocket Oh, I can do this. I can have, I, you know, the entertainment becomes the source of the reason why you live. You know, the, your, your source of uh, the, the things you look forward to. You know, it's not looking forward to, oh, I can do this. And after a while, my children get old, they'll have a home that, you know what I'm saying, to be paid off completely. And they ain't got to worry about, you know what I'm saying, paying a mortgage on it. That's not, that's the furthest from your mind because it's impulse. I gotta feel good. I gotta feel good. And this money, I can do something right now with this money that make me feel good. But that's the trap. And then we find ourselves in them traps. And 10 years go past and 20 and 40 and 50. And then somebody who didn't have those impulses are in a much better position than you and yours. So I'm just saying, family, it's about time for us to change up the way we think. You know, really. Um, 
and not and without beating up on people with our words you know I had to learn that the hard way I'm still learning it you know I'm human I've had my moments where I get frustrated and, and angry bouts of anger and want to lash out and things but more and more I'm learning that that beating up on people with our words that don't help that don't help no situation calling them all kind of names and things like that for the decisions that they choose you know it's best to just educate people on what they don't know you know and that's all of us we all have, you know can be educated out here on things that we don't know and those of us who do have a better understanding of of certain things uh, we should teach those who don't you know and not beat them up and call them out their names and and make them feel worse you know what I'm saying you know I take my own personal story I have some of you may know I have a son um Kyrie Kyrie's third he'll, he's 30 he'll, he's 30 years old was 30 in March well he's suffered he's been suffering with substance abuse for a long time a long time since he was a teenager and uh, as a mother you know, my son, my only son, you know, that's crushing to, um, and so I, for a long time, I used to always beat him up about it. I mean, how every time I, you know, would see him high, I would, you know, get on him and, you know, I would be mad and angry and I just gave him the blues, the blues about, you know, this issue. You know, get, you know, why, I'm, I'm like, why, what is wrong? Why can't you just, you know, get a grip on yourself? Get, you know what I'm saying? Get a handle. You know, I used to, you know, I used to beat him up with my words. And after a while, I started to realize that shit ain't working. It's not working. You know, it's not working. You know, clearly, you know, he still suffers from substance abuse to this day. So, um, and in fact, you know, I probably was making matters worse because you know it wasn't I wasn't using encouraging words to help him you know what I'm saying his times of weakness and things or you know reassuring him that he loved regardless you know what I'm saying things like of that nature I wasn't doing any of that so I had to grow and learn that that's not healthy it wasn't healthy for him and it certainly wasn't healthy for me either because you know, I felt bad. I felt bad, you know what I'm saying, for, for saying some of the things I said. And I'm sure he felt bad for hearing it. So it don't do nothing to help family. In fact, it lowers people's self-esteem. When you beat them up, you beat them up and beat them up over and over and over again with your words. You know, y'all stupid, you know, dumbasses, just stop doing that and da 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 It don't work that way. You know, you gotta, you, we, we gotta talk to each other with encouraging words, with loving words, you know, so people can feel when you love them or not, and they'll tune out. You know, they will tune you completely out when you, every time they turn around, all you want to do is call them out their name and tell them what they ain't doing right. So I'm just saying, family, just encouraging you guys to um, use your voice most definitely. Speak out absolutely. We need more of that in this day and time. But be careful with how you do it. You know, use your words carefully because, you know, imagine how you would feel that every time you turn around, somebody telling you, what the, the, you know, you ain't shit. You ain't never going to be shit. You stupid. You a fool. You know what I'm saying? Over and over and over again. You know, imagine how that would make you feel over time. So consider that before you before you speak out and how you choose to use use your words. Um, but let's let's again, we should always have an open dialogue. Let's definitely talk about it. Malik says he's guilty of being very impulsive. Um Yeah, and I think that's the first step towards change where we can accept. We can accept not what nobody else is doing, but what we doing. You know, and sitting in those feelings. I was having a conversation the other day with my friend, and I was like, we, we don't, we don't, we run from our emotions. And they're there for a reason. They're there to teach, and they're there to guide, you know, us in our lives. But we reject a lot of the things 
that we don't like to hear. We don't want to feel uncomfortable. We don't like how that feels. So we'll reject it. We'll turn it off. We'll switch the channel. We'll t block you. We'll, you know what I'm saying? As opposed to sitting in those emotions and asking, why am I feeling this way? You know what I'm saying? Damn, like, what? You know, what she said makes sense. Or what he said makes sense. But, um, you know, why? Why am I feeling this way when I hear that? When somebody says that? It, it 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 moves me in a way that's uncomfortable. What is that about? You know, and so to hearing Malik say that that he's guilty of being very impulsive. You know, I think all of us suffer for some type of impulses in some way, shape, or form. We all have our vices, you know. But I but I think some vices can be more damaging than others. And then when you make it a collective thing, you know what I'm saying? So imagine like if if everybody in a one community vice was 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 drug addiction, I think about the Native Americans, some of those Indian reservations, and so many of them suffer from um, alcoholism and drug abuse and things like that, and what that does to the whole community, the community as a whole, to tear the whole community down. So, so just so, so some of the things that you do, you may think it's just you ain't doing harm and causing no harm to nobody else but yourself, but that's not necess that, that's not necessarily the case. It's like but just some vices are more destructive than others, you know. So uh, George says, "Lord, we have so much work to do on ourselves, so much to recover from." Still, sad to say, self hatred still manifests among our people. Absolutely, we must also consider just how much the oppressor. Um, is working against us. The Ku Klux Klan was formed in December of 1865, the same year as Juneteenth. Wow. Christmas Eve, we need a different collective mindset. It's not a request of independence that is celebrating. It's, it's a declaration. Well said, George. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, help one another build, David said. No doubt. Um... Yeah, David said, emotion always subsides. Nothing wrong with silence before separation or reconciliation. <sighs> yeah, um, to figure out why we are triggered. Yes, Hampton, sitting in that pain and in them emotions and feeling our way through them and figuring out why we are triggered instead of lashing out all the time at other people and getting um, angry and you know doing even more destructive things out of our anger you know to sit in that pain and ask and, 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 and feel your way through them it's wisdom in that it's wisdom and it's understanding in that because what happens is now you know you like oh every time I hear that I feel that now you got time to, to sit and think about it and let it resonate and you come into a better understanding of yourself and why you feel the way you do and then you can and then take that new information and maneuver better, you know. But when you reject and deny and, you know what I'm saying, and try to block and you don't cover your ears and your eyes and you don't want to hear and see anything that make you feel uncomfortable, you're not giving yourself um, the space to self-reflect. You're running from that. So that's how you learn yourself better. Hey, Larry. Who else just joined? Calvin. Yeah, it is imp important information. Again, I would just say be careful how we talk to each other. Really, and again, I'm talking to myself here too. I'm not perfect. You know what I'm saying? Again, I'm not perfect. I know I get my moments. Sometimes online too. Some people say something and I, before I think, I'm lashing out. You know, and usually when I do that, I feel bad later. Like, I ain't had no business doing that. I shouldn't have done that. So instead of having to feel bad later all the time, stop. Stop, take a breath, reflect, and think. Hey, Calvin. Um, those of us um, who understand better must teach those who don't. That's all. That's all it is. We don't hoard information. We have conversations like this about things that we, we're on opposite ends of the spectrum about. You know what I'm saying? The Trump versus Biden scenario. And, you know... The, all those kind of divi divisions that's within our own 
communities. We don't, you know, let's let's talk about it. Let's not go back and forth, you know, beating each other up across the table. Let's sit down and have a conversation and discuss as to why you feel the way you feel about it. Okay, let, let me sh- shut up and listen to your side of the story and hear you out. And when you finish, let me tell you why I feel the way I feel about the situation. Civilized, you know, a civilized discourse. Okay, and then, you know, okay, well, you know, some things we're going to have to agree to disagree on. Some things you might say that encourage me to change my perspective. Some things I might say may, may encourage you to change your perspective. You know what I'm saying? We're in a different place. We're in a better place of understanding each other. Okay, so now we understand each other. Let's come on. Let's move forward together. You know, even if we disagree, we still, we can't go nowhere without each other, family. We ain't. And, you know, I say, I say if you want to bang up and beat up on, on somebody, and beat up on our enemy. Bang up and beat up on them. But we got to support one another, encourage and uplift one another. Because when we do that, we helping eat ourselves. You know, the higher... Our, our people rise the higher we rise individually as well so it don't help to abuse our, each other with our words it don't help um yeah so that's basically what i wanted to talk about this morning to reflect do we even have time really to reflect somebody said on the stream said yes we do you know it's always a good thing to reflect um on, on our decisions and what we do and I deliberately wanted to come after the fact because people going to do what they're going to do anyway. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's 4th of July, whether it's Christmas celebrations or whatever. So, you know what I'm saying? You let people have their, 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 their moments of joy. But okay, now let's sit down and talk about this. Okay, for next year. So, okay, you had your moment of joy. So, what are we going to do next? We're going to do the same thing we did this year, next year? So we can find ourselves in the same predicament next year that we are in this year. Or we're going to switch some things up a bit and make things happen differently. And, and so we can be in a different place, you know, a better place, a stronger place. You know what I'm saying? A higher place, you know, and not look to other people to solve all our problems for us. Even the people amongst in our communities that's out there on the front lines, that's moving and shaking and pushing you know what I'm saying? Helping legislations push and helping out there on the front lines with guns in front of uh, buildings, making sure that the women is safe or whatever out there. Or You know what I'm saying? All those things that's going on right now. A lot of times we have a tendency to sit back and allow, oh, yeah, yeah, rah, 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 go get them. Yeah, yeah. No, wait a minute now. What what we all doing as a collective? What can we be doing? That's who what, those of us who are watching all that go down. How can we help to contribute to those energetic forces to make them stronger? Even if it's given to donating to to one of our good causes, that people that are out there fighting. I'll show you guys um, my shirt. Appeal. Can y'all see that? I don't know. I don't know if y'all can read that. Well, appeal, speaking of, it's a um it's an organization where I live. I'm in Maryland, but they're based out of Washington DC, right across the line. And a bunch of good people have come together and decided that they're going to build a black owned credit union. You know what I'm saying? We gotta build our own institutions, financial institutions. And so they put out a call to the community to help do that. They need a certain amount of money to help raise funds for the credit union to get it off the off the ground and get it going. And this credit union is going to help all black people. You know what I'm saying? And, and we'll be able to do more things with, with a black-owned credit union in the city. And so, again, my my job, I might not, you know what I'm saying, be be right there helping to write all the legislation of this black owned credit union or be there at all the meetings and things. But I did join, you know, it's a, it's a membership fee, you know, and it's a nonprofit and, um, yeah. And so I'm going to do my part instead of just rah, rah, yeah, yeah. Y'all going out there, Peel brothers do y'all thing and wait.
waiting, sitting back, waiting for them to do all the work. I'm going to do what I can do to help push this movement forward. And if that just means to write in a check, you know what I'm saying? Even if it's a $5 check, you know, giving towards those people who are out there on the front lines, making it happen for us all. They not do, you know what I'm saying? These people, they got, they not taking their, their free time and, and um, they could be doing a whole lot of different things with their free time, but they've decided to come together and um, collectively and organize to bring forth a financial institution for black people. So we got to do our part, family, to help things like that. You know, it's just one example, but there's plenty of things that we can be doing outside of cheering people on who are out here um, um, going the extra mile for us, you know? That's, those are the ones that really change the world. You stop to think about it. Those people who are out there that we look at and look up to, um, the Malcolm X's and the Martin Luther King's and, and all the other people, the Frederick Douglasses, and you go down the line, you know what I'm saying? The people and those, the, the people that we don't know, the names that we don't know. But there's always, those are the type of people that help change the course of history, you know? So what are we doing to help them? What do we do to help them? So, um, those watermelons is from Appeal. I don't know where the watermelons are from. Are you talking about from the glow? I just ripped the paper off of it. That I'm drinking, the sweet watermelon, the cucumber, and the mint. I'm not sure where the sister who does these juices um, get their watermelons from. But I can show you my own. Y'all want to see the garden and the stuff that I'm growing real quick? Let's take a quick walk before we get off of this. Uh, hey, Larry. Thank you. Sometimes we must agree to disagree and take into conscious the fact that we may have different perspectives yeah hey omawali good morning haki hey um cc i just talked about you me and sean yesterday hoping you all right calvin let me um turn this around and show you guys uh -oh, what i do what i'm doing this is my little my first garden right speaking of watermelons so I got all kind of stuff growing here. So I took it upon myself because I see the writing on the wall. Oh shoot, give me a second. This, okay. I saw the writing on the wall about where we hadn't in this whole food desert. Here's my watermelons. You don't see them forming just yet, but they will be eventually. I got corn growing. I got squash. Let me see my squash. I've been picking out this squash. I'll show you guys. Can you see that? Can you see the squash growing? I got squash growing. This is kale. Right? The squash takes over. Lord knows. And if you guys are following me on Instagram, I do these weekly videos about, you know, y'all that came along with me on the journey. When this when this uh, raised garden bed didn't have anything in it a few weeks back and now it's overgrown. Look at the sunflower. This sunflower is tall as me. Wow. Yep. So, um, this is another squash plant that I didn't know what it was when I planted it. It was a gift. The bulb. Here's, um, my tomato. My, um, tomatoes are growing. So, again, what I can do is what I can do. Cucumber. Oh, look at the cucumbers. Yeah, they're growing real good too. So, I got to come out here and pull some of them. So, I have um, broccoli down there somewhere. These are my. Ooh. Oh, God, something. These are my corn stalks. These things are growing big and tall too. So, yeah. I have um, grapes growing on the grapevine. They're not doing as well as I would need them to, but they're coming along too. So, yeah. So, 
I just say it's time, family. It's time for us to um, do some things for ourselves. Don't you think? All right, family. That's it for me this morning. That's just my message. It was I woke up with it and figured I, would, you know, get on and let's have a conversation about the Fourth of July. What that means for us. You know what I'm saying? And to stop to really stop and think about what we do with our money and our time and our energy in this place because um, if we want to keep having the same results that we've been having then we just keep doing what we're doing just keep on doing what you're doing over you know and we'll keep on um, suffering through a lot of the things that we deal with but if we want to change some things up and we want a better future and we want our children to be you know more at peace and be out here free and um, doing things that's uh, righteous you know more righteous intended things then we got to switch some things up it's just as simple as that we got to make some sacrifices and we got to switch up some things that we've been customarily doing so all right family let me see if anybody else had anything to say uh, yeah I got a food bank over here yeah, and this is my first time gardening, so I've learned some things. Like I said, I have um, took folks along the journey on um, Instagram. So follow me on Instagram. You'll see a whole lot there. And that's same, my same name right here on Facebook. You can find me on Instagram as well. And I got a series called My First Garden there. All right, family. And I just kind of shared a lot of the tips and things of the things that I learned along the way about gardening. Um, a lot more easier than I anticipated. I had help, but it's still, you know what I'm saying, I was, I had my mind filled with all this stuff because I didn't know. You know, when you don't know, you, you get nervous or whatever. And so when I started doing this stuff, I was like, oh, dang, it was that easy, huh? <laughs> it was that easy to grow, to grow a whole bunch of squash and cucumbers. So, yeah, yeah, I encourage everybody to have something growing in there, uh, even if it's a a plant in your window kitchen window yeah all right family i'm off take care of each other peace